Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is the Ramble. We go from now until midnight Eastern time here on the other coast of the United States, on the East Coast. And I am your host, Alex Bennett. How are you? You know what I haven't done? I always forget to do this. See, what happens is whenever I reboot this machine, which I've done since I was on last, uh, it, it resets how my camera looks, and I don't want it to look that way, okay? So I have to go to the camera, and then you're going to see it go to, see? See what the happens there? Th this is, uh, this is uh, Logitech. They don't do things right. Now we're there. We're good for that. But then I got to go, see, I got to go over here and bring the uh, video down. There we go. Okay. Now we're, I think we're okay. All right, I think we're fine. Oh, I also have to turn off the autofocus. Otherwise, it will go blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I forgot. Okay, I forget every time. That's the way I am. I forget these sort of things. Okay, let me explain uh, why I wasn't on, and then you can hear the merry adventures of Alex Bennett. You know, my wife has been uh, getting mad at me lately. Well, what else is new? Because she says that the why is it you tell everybody what you're going through with the thing, with the cancer thing, the prostate cancer daily? And I go, well, because uh, I, uh, it's uh, important to me to let my audience. I've always shared my life with my audience. It's just part of my shtick. And so when something like this happens, boy, I got a lot to talk about, you know. So why shouldn't I let them know? The only problem is, and I've said this before, and please, folks, you don't have to do it. Don't wish me lots of luck. Oh, our hearts are with you. Oh, I better turn that on, too. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. Oh, boy. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I, just, I just, you know, I let my audience know what's going on in my life. And it's also a fodder. It gives me something to talk about. I'll have something here for about a half hour that I can talk about that you'll uh, probably be interested in. Um, but, but people get worried about the fact uh, that, I, that I have prostate cancer. And how many times have you heard somebody say, I've got prostate cancer? I think Imus said that, and he lived another 10 years, okay? Uh, and died of something else, I think. They didn't say what he died of. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Who else is? Oh, um, uh, Rudy Giuliani went through prostate cancer about 20 years ago. And everybody, oh, Giuliani's got, pro got cancer. They don't say prostate cancer. It's got cancer. You know, like all cancers are the same. And Rudy Giuliani is still alive 20 years later, thanks to the guy who was treating me. Okay. Yes, he's the guy who implanted the seeds in Rudy Giuliani. Now, we can either say... That's wonderful because I know the guy's good, or we can say that's terrible because it was Rudy Giuliani's and he's still alive to make our lives miserable. But that, that's another story altogether. I'm very happy that he worked on Rudy Giuliani with the seeds, and now 20 years later, I'm sure he's got it even more perfected than he did when he did it before. Anyway, so I get diagnosed with prostate cancer, and I mention on my on my page that I've got prostate cancer and everybody goes crazy. Oh my God, we're so sorry for you, Alex. You know, folks, it's not like other cancers. And in fact, not all cancers are alike. The two most uh, curable of all the cancers out there are breast cancer, which is number one, and number two is prostate cancer. And the reason being that prostate cancer, in some cases, in most cases, especially at my age, are slow growing. For instance, I asked my doctor, has it grown out, do you think it's grown outside the prostate? And he went, no, absolutely not. Uh, because they're slow to grow at my age, all right? If you get it when you're in your 50s, yeah, then it's a more serious kind of situation, okay? Uh, so I, uh, um, uh, uh, 
so I, I, you know, I just tell people, but please don't get all worried about it. You know, there's nothing to be worried about. Uh, I'm going to be fine. Uh, they, my doctor says uh, this isn't the thing that's going to kill me, that I'll probably die of something else, which makes me then worry about what that something else is going to be. Anyway, um, I, uh, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to see what, what, come on. There we go. Okay. I was trying to see. I was, my, my thing was behind my uh, uh, web YouTube rendering of this thing was behind not with you but with me anyway so uh, bottom line is that don't worry about me not all prostate cancers are alike uh, this prostate cancer my doctor says that uh, giving me all the treatments that he's giving me which is first a, a dose of radiation uh, from a thing well it's called cyber knife but it's really stereotactic and uh uh, it's what they call it at uh, Mount Sinai because if you do CyberKnife, you're simply buying a product name uh, that you can use, and everybody goes, "Oh, I get the CyberKnife." Oh, you know. But the, the stereotactic is exactly the same, and um, so he's going to give me that, and then he's going to put the seeds in, I guess, uh, because he feels that it, 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 as, he, as I said to him, I said, "You feel that both these things together." are going to just really wipe it out. He says, absolutely. Okay. So, and with the radiation, probably going to have side effects of being a little uh, mild, uh, what do they call it? Mild, uh, bu, 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 do you see? Fr forgetfulness. No, mild um, fatigue. Okay, so you might see me some nights here going, I'm really tired. I think I have to go to sleep. Let's end this show early. On the other hand, uh, uh, very few other side effects. In fact, I met, well, I'll tell you about that later. I met a guy who's going through it. Um, but um, uh, then with the seeds, it's a fatigue plus I may have to go urinate a lot. So during this show, I may have to say to you, keep talking, I have to go pee, all right? But that's going to be the most of it. Actually, I'm hopefully, I'm not going to miss many days doing this. I start the first treatment on the 27th of the uh a cyber night. But let me tell you what, why I wasn't on the last two nights. The first night I wasn't on because that day I had the, uh, the prep for the stereotactic or cyber knife radiation. Uh, and what that entailed was putting me out, okay? And then a 10-minute procedure in which he puts in a, what they call a spacer between the rectum and the prostate. That's to, pre uh, that's to protect the rectum from the radiation. And then they also, he also goes in there and puts in four little gold markers on my prostate. You know what's happening to my prostate. Between the biopsy and the implantation of, of this gold, which gold prostate, um, uh, I, I've, I, I, my prostate's starting to look like a pin cushion, okay? And that's what it's become, too. And it will become more so with the seeds, which they put about, I don't know, 100 of them or something in there, and they're about the size of a grain of rice. And then they're radioactive, and they do their job for about two months, and they peter out. And hopefully, uh, you're, you're good to go. But anyway, so back to what happened. So I, I, I went in for this procedure, which is only a 10 to 15-minute procedure at best. Well... I went in at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and finally was uh, uh, let go at 6.30, okay? So why, when it's only 15 minutes or 10 or 15 minutes, uh, well, let me tell you. First of all, the, the preparation for it, they have you interviewed by somebody and then you go into a room and you take your clothes off and get into your, get into your um, I don't know, surgery uh, gear, and then uh, they give you a little bathrobe, you know, it's not, it doesn't have any name on it, though. It would be very nice if they gave you a bathrobe like at a hotel and let you keep it, right? And it was a nice fluffy thing, but no, it's just a schlumpy sh thing. Okay. So that takes a while, a while to do that, and then they, they a nurse comes in and asks you a whole bunch of questions, asks you all the drugs you're doing and not doing. And you tell her, here's the drugs I'm doing and not doing, okay? Uh, and, oh, my, my back is itching. 
excuse me. Uh. And uh, so then, uh, then they, they t- t- take me and they wheel me up to about the ninth floor. They get, put me on a gurney and they wheel me up to, no, they put me in a gurney? I can't remember. No, I walked. I literally walked to the ninth floor. That was it. I walked. And I, in fact, I mentioned to him it was like I was being executed and he was my guard. And he says, I've been told that quite often. And we walk down this long hallway and then I go into this room. He said, sit here, wait, you know. Uh, and then uh, assistant to the doctor, the anesthesiologist comes by to talk to me and said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be the anesthesiologist in this whole mess. And uh, here's what we're going to do. And uh, then he, he, he asked me, did I eat? I said, no, I didn't eat anything since midnight last night. He said, did you, uh, oh, I had to take a, uh, an enema the night before and then a fleet enema the day of. Okay. All right. So that's to clear out, I guess, any poop. So when he goes in there, he doesn't get invaded by my fecal matter. And um, so I had to do all that the night before the fleets on either, either, end, of, either end of the day. Uh, and then uh, uh, he, he went through all that, and then finally he said, okay, well, your doctor will be with you soon. And then my doctor came in, and we sat down, we talked for a few moments. And he's a very good doctor. He tells you everything he's going to do to you. Here's what we're going to do. Ba 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 ba. And are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I walk in. They say, get on the, on the gurney. I get on the operating table, rather. I get on the operating table. Uh, the doctor comes in, straps me in like I'm going to fall out, right? Uh, straps me in, and um, uh, they start, uh, uh, they can't find, see, my problem is, I, if you look here, I don't have any veins, all right? Uh, pretty hard to find a vein there. You gotta, you know, and then they tell you, uh, uh, I didn't drink a lot of water. If you drink a lot of water, you'll see a vein easier than if you don't. But anyway, so I had them go, you can see the little marks there. I had them go through the veins in my hand, because they're they're big and they're huge, and you can find some blood coming out of there. So the uh, anesthetologist puts it in there. And he says, now I'm going to turn on the uh, propofol, which is the stuff that killed Michael Jackson. I, I'm going to put turn on the propofol, and uh, uh, you'll, uh, you'll feel some slight burning. Well, I don't know what he meant by slight burning, but it was. I was in pain. I was in huge pain, especially I remember right here, in my thumb and in the crook of my hand here, just burning like crazy. He said, well, wait a minute, I'll put in a numbing agent. I'm going to myself, why didn't he put the numbing agent in first, then send the propofol through? So next time I'm going to remember to tell him to, to whoever's doing it to put in the numbing agent, okay? So uh, um, um, all of a sudden, he says the last words I said before I went out was, uh, hey, that's pretty good. I'm feeling that. And then the next thing I know, I wake up, and they're picking me up and moving me to a gurney, uh, and uh, uh, I'm being wheeled out of there. Um, and um, you would think that okay, because before I've had this before, and and when I had a, a, a colonoscopy, and um, I when I was through, they just said, oh, okay, that's it. And I get up and I walked out of the uh, operating room and walked into another room, sat down for a couple of minutes just to kind of get in decent enough clarity that I could put my clothes on, put my clothes on and leave, okay? No, they then wheel me down on this gurney uh, to, uh, no, on in a, a wheelchair, yeah, in a wheelchair. And they take me down in a wheelchair. I'm trying to remember, where did I, where, where did they do the gurney? I seem to remember a, gir, my, a gurney being taking me around, but I don't remember that now. No, I didn't have a gurney. It was a wheelchair. See how out of it I was? A wheelchair, and they take me down another nine floors to another room where they put me in a, oh, I know, I, at some point, they, they didn't know, they didn't wheel me. No, that was it. They put me on a gurney, took me down to the the recovery room where the gurney was being used as my bed. And I was lying there and I was getting a drip of uh, saline or whatever into my system. And they said, uh, it'll be about an hour before you can leave. And I'm going, geez, you know, it used to be you just got up and you left, right? No, this is a hospital. They don't want to get sued. So I was was, uh, stuck there for... uh, 
at least a good hour. Now they have me get off the gurney because I can get off of it, and they unhook me from the saline solution, and they take all the all the things that the heart stuff and stuff off of me, and um, the stuff that's making the machine go ping, and um, they then wheel me. That was it. Then they then wheeled me. See, I can't remember half this stuff. Uh, they then wheeled me. I'm glad I'm telling you now because I'm going to do it as a life in the passing lane soon. And, and, and this way I'm starting to remember again. They wheeled me down to this room where I meet up with Mar Marjorie was, was with me in the recovery room. And then she followed me down into, the, uh, into this other room where they had me sit in a chair. And they said, um, here, drink some water, things like that. They said, I said, why? They said, you can't leave till you pee. Now, I don't know about you. Anytime I've ever had to pee in a cup, you know, like for a test, it's not that easy. You, you people know what I'm talking about. Whenever you're forced to pee, you can't pee, all right? Whenever you don't want to pee, you got to go like crazy. So anyway, I, uh, uh, I'm, and they give me this, this, this jar with a nozzle in it that I guess the, my penis can fit in. Um, I'm not bragging. It's a big opening. Uh, and uh, so I'm standing there for five minutes trying to pee, knowing that if I don't pee, I'm not going to be able to get out of the hospital. Okay? Well, okay. That, that's, that's that. I can't get out of the hospital until I pee, and I'm not peeing. And I'm dripping. I'm dripping a little bit in there. I'm looking, and it's like, uh, it's not even, has to get up the 100 line, which is only about yay far. Uh, and, and then I pee, then all of a sudden I can pee a lot. I'm feeling, oh, it's great. Okay, so I pee a lot, and then I look, and it's only like about halfway to where it's supposed to go. So I'm more, more, more trying to pee into this thing. And, it, I, you know, you get a shy bladder when you're under this kind of pressure to pee. You guys know this. I don't know if women know this, but guys know this. Um, so uh, I uh, um, um, finally pee a little more, and I finally say to the nurse, look, is this enough? And she looks at it, and she goes, well, it isn't up to 100, but you proved you can pee, so get dressed and get out of here. And then she gives me a whole booklet of things to do and not to do, half of which have nothing to do with the procedure that I just had. It said, don't do any heavy lifting for six to eight weeks. Huh? And be careful that and when you get in the shower, you don't get too much water on your incisions. I don't have any incisions. So they gave me this booklet telling me of stuff to do for something that didn't happen to me. But I'm not going to complain. I just want to get the fuck out of there. And I get out of there and I come home. Now, I could have maybe done a show that night, but, you know, I'm so exhausted from the anesthesia and everything else, I figured, take the night off, right? My doctor says, I will make an appointment for you to go over to, uh, uh, go over to our radiology lab to get, uh, do a simulation for the cyber knife, okay? I'm, I'm calling it a cyber knife for you because it's easier for me to say that than stereotatic, okay? Uh, and I said, uh, okay. And he said, uh, we'll see. We'll try and get you an appointment for Thursday. Okay, so this is Tuesday. Yesterday, the woman calls me and says, we, they can see you tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Here's the address, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I will be sending you the information, or you'll be getting some information on what to do. The nurse will call and tell you what to do uh, before that. I said, there's prep? They said, oh, yeah, there's some prep. Okay. What's the prep? Now, how many of you out there, raise your hands, have had a colonoscopy? You know it's terrible at the colonoscopy. It's the prep the night before. And I've always done it using a, a thing called citric, um, 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 oh, citric, uh, well, anyway, whatever. It's a, it's a laxative, and it comes in a bottle, about a 10-ounce bottle, and you drink it all at once, and then you, you shit like crazy. It's what happens. Well, she calls me up and she says, you're going to have to use this citric stuff. And then also uh, give yourself, what was it? Uh, uh, oh, and then take some milk of magnesia, okay? 
So I did this, uh, the citric stuff, which is not bad tasting. It's sparkling, and it was cherry-flavored, and it's sugar-free, which is very good if you're on a diet. And um, um, so I did the, uh, the citric stuff, um, and um, I drank that. And then just before I go to sleep, I had to have a spoonful, a teaspoonful, a tablespoonful of um, milk of magnesia. Now, it's been years since I was a kid and had milk of magnesia, all right? And um, I had forgotten how disgusting it tastes. I mean, it isn't that it tastes bad. It just is devoid of any taste and is nothing but chalk you're putting in your mouth. And it's not, not pleasant. Of all the things that I had to do, including getting stuff probed up my ass and, you know, stuff done in my prostate and all of that, this really was the worst, okay? Blood draws weren't this bad. Milk of magnesia is pretty goddamn terrible. So I did the milk of magnesia, and uh, I then I had to relieve myself because I figured the citric uh, stuff was working. I can't, I'm trying to remember what the name of that stuff was. I want to I find it so I can just tell you because it's going to drive me crazy if I can't remember uh, what it was called. Wait a minute, medical, uh, here we go. It was called, oh, magnesium citrate, okay? magnesium citrate. And then I had a fleet enema and milk magnesia. The fleet enema was the next morning. And I'm wondering what this is all about. I found out later on that it's very important to the process of the radiation. Um, so I do all this, and I, I poop my brains out, and then I go to sleep. And then I wake up, and I figure, well, I did all that last night, and I forgot the milk of magnesia. And then all of a sudden, I have this urge to go. And go. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm having stomach cramps and everything. Uh, this is in the morning. Uh, but I, I, I bear with it and keep going. And I finally get to the point where I'm not bothering it anymore. No American Patriot, not citric acid, magnesium citrate. Uh, yes, uh, Scott Boddicker, you are absolutely right. You win the, uh, the GabNet Prize, which is 20 GabNet bucks. Um, so anyway, so I do all this stuff, all this shit, and, uh, uh I go there today at two o'clock in the afternoon. Now, I got to tell you, I went to the radiology oncology department at Mount Sinai, and this is where they do all the prep for the radiation. Radiation's not going to be done there. It's going to be done in another building. I think probably away from everybody else so it doesn't hurt people because it's all radio, radioactive. Anyway, I go to this place, and I've got to tell you, I've been, I, I had to do, deal with the other part of the hospital, okay? But this building and this place, which was in the basement, was fucking gorgeous, I mean, they had a waiting room that was with these plush chairs and a big 20, uh, what, 32, uh, what was it? It looked to be maybe 65-inch TV set. Of course, it had Rachel Ray on, but who needs that? Anyway, and, and it was just gorgeous. And then they come and get me, and, and it was all right on time, you know. And they, they take me in, and first I'm, I'm, I'm met by a guy named Billy, who was very nice to me, and said, go into this room here, and somebody will be with you shortly. And then very shortly, I'm joined by a woman. I'm trying to remember her name now. But she was very, very nice, uh, really terrific. Uh, and um, do I have her name here? No, oh, well, I don't care. Uh, anyway, uh, and she gave me all the dietary requirements, which she said, don't eat any gassy foods. And here's the, the reason why is that we don't want gas in there. We don't want your innards bloated because we have to get our radioactive stuff through your stomach and so on to get to the, I mean, whatever. Uh, and I said, what does that consist of? And I look at it, and it's just no carbs. Well, 
come on, that's my diet anyway. And I told her, I said, I just, I do nothing but low carbs. You know, I'll just cut out the chocolates at night, which are sugar free and make me fart like crazy. And we're good to go. And she said, yeah, you can eat all the meat you want, all the turkey you want, all the pork you want. You know, you want your bacon in the morning, your eggs. Go ahead, have a good time. Uh, just don't have, uh, you know, th these certain things and this certain things. And I got a whole list of them. And, and it, it was absolutely the kind of diet I've been on for so long now. Uh, and uh, so and anyway, then, then another guy comes in and he leads me, says, come with me. And I go with him. He leads me down this hallway. And I'm looking at this hallway, and there are all these people working at computers. And it's gorgeous. It is a state of the art. It's like I'm at, at NASA, and this is mission control. I mean, and they, I just walked down all the way. Oh, and by the way, while this is before this went on, when I, before I walked down the hall, my doctor actually came in, my oncologist. And uh, he wanted me to sign a piece of paper, and he said, how was the operation the other day? Did he have any problems? I said, well, my butt ached a little bit because that's where he went. Well, did a lot of stuff. And I said, outside of that, I think I feel okay. Yeah, I, they, I, I survived that all right. And he said, good to hear that. And he said, uh, so then he was there for this whole simulation, not in the room with me. He was in a control room overseeing the whole thing. And I figured, you know, once I was sent over to the radiology lab, that was the last I was going to see of him. He just gets the reports, hey, we, we, we zapped him with the radiation. But that, was, that isn't the case. He was there, and I really appreciated that. Really appreciated that a lot. Um, anyway. So we go into this room and they say, okay, this is where we're gonna do the simulation. First of all, they put me down on this, on this gurney in front of a CAT scan, CT scan. And uh, uh, I'm lying there and uh, they say, now we're gonna put some stuff under you, okay? And it's gonna be warm and they put it under me. And what it is, is it's plaster. And while I'm lying there, they're making a mold of me so that when the next time happens that I go to them, or I get the thing happening, they bring out my little mold, put it down on the gurney, put me in the mold so I don't move. Okay, isn't that cool? There is now a, a representation of the lower half of my body uh, hanging somewhere over at Mount Sinai waiting for me to use it. And then they said, they then did a CT scan of me to look at my prostate. And my doctor was in there and he looked at the slides. I said, he's looking at the slides now. And uh, okay, he's approved everything. Okay, now we have to do one last thing. And I go, what's that? And they said, we have to tattoo you. I said, what? He said, yeah, we have to tattoo you. Um, let me show you. I, I don't want, I hate for people to see my belly because it's not great, but can you see this? Can you see, where is it? There, there's one of them. See that? That's a tattoo, right? And then I've got some, I know it looks, oh, that's my navel. Here's, here's the tattoo right down here. See, do you, can you see that? Okay, there's the tattoo. And there's one, there's one over on my side, two on either side, and there's one down f further in my pubic region, and they tattooed me. And they said, why did I said, why'd you tattoo me? And they said, well, because uh, this is a, um, uh, because that's, that's how we use those as markers as well as the points inside your prostate to, to guide the radiation. And they said, okay, you're all through. This was maybe, I gotta say, the most pleasant experience I've ever had in a hospital ever in my life. Uh, they, they were just so good and so professional. And as I'm leaving, there's a guy putting his clothes on, and he said, uh, oh, he says, uh, uh, are you in, have you, uh, how, many, how many treatments have you had so far? And I said, none. I said, I had the simulation today. He says, oh, okay. I said, how's it going for you? He says, all right. I said, any side effects? He says, just fatigue. He says, that's all. Fatigue. I said, is it bad? He says, 
Well, sometimes I have to go to sleep. I went, fine. You know, I can live with fatigue. Sleeping is one of my ba best functions, okay? So, um, and I kind of felt by, by meeting this guy that I was part of a support group. And I, I look on the billboard there, and there's actually a support group. If I want to go at 10 o'clock in the morning to Mount Sinai, I can go to a prostate cancer radio radiology support group. Uh, of which I'd probably be the only one there. But anyway, I, uh, uh, I found it so far one of the m more pleasant experiences, although the tattoos probably hurt more than when they drew blood from me today. You know, every time I turn around, somebody's sticking a needle in my arm. Uh, and uh, anyway, that's my, uh, that, that's a, a quick story, quick story. Well, nothing quick about it. And I'll probably repeat this all again. I'm going to do it as a, uh, another episode of Life in the Passing Lane, at least each step along the way on this uh, really fascinating journey because what's next is, for me, the science fiction of my youth. I mean, I'm going to be in a room with a robot arm that is going to use the gold points in my prostate and these little tattoos they put on here to figure out where to go. And, um, oh, the other thing I had to drink was four glasses of water. They're going to say, you're going to have to do that every time. Also, you're going to have to do the milk, milk, milk of magnesia at night and the fleet enema in the morning. But you can eat anything you want. You know, we don't care if you eat um, uh, after the enema and stuff because it's going to take forever for that stuff to get down to that part of your body. We just don't want that area blocked and we want it as clean as possible. So, uh, they, you know, they, they ask you to pee and to go to the bathroom before the whole thing just to clear everything out that might be in there because you're now going to have to drink four glasses of water and that's going to kind of fill you up and they want that to take time to get there. Anyway, uh, you go in there, you lie down. I, they Oh, best part, they said, we can put some music on for you. Anybody you'd like to hear? And I say, well, Frank Sinatra. And I said, uh, what do you have? And he says, oh, anything you want, because we got Spotify. <laughs> they subscribe to Spotify so that they can play music in there. It wasn't loud enough, so I hardly heard anything. But still, they play the music you want to hear. Uh, it's, it, it's just a wonderful, nice process, you know, that is made nicer by the people who I was dealing with today. And uh, um, uh, let me see here. I think I have her name here, right here. Is this it? Is this it? Maybe not. This may be my doctor's. Uh, no, that's my doctor's card. Hold on a second. Where is the other card? Uh, gee, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, well. Let me see here. I, I did have it. Uh, oh, well. Hmm. I don't know where, the, the, I have the card around here somewhere. Wait a minute, hold on. Just stay there. I just, I just want to give her credit because she was so nice to me. Uh, huh, I don't have it. Hmm. Well, that's strange. I, th I, I thought I put it down here earlier, and I guess I didn't. Um, but uh, let me see here. No, no. No, where the heck did I put it? Well, that's going to drive me nuts for the rest of the night, trying to remember where I, I put her card. Anyway, so, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, thanks to her, whoever she was, and I've got her card, and I have no idea where I put it. But I know it's here because it, I had it earlier. Okay, anyway, let me just get this, uh, this going here. Let me get Skype up. So if anybody wants to call me about this uh, or anything else, you know, you're more than, uh, we're more than happy to have you do it, okay? Well, how long is it going to take for Skype to, there we go, that should do it. Okay, there we go. Now it's taking a while. Come on. There we go. Now there we go. Okay. Phew. Wow, it took a while. Well. Yeah. He's probably going, I haven't seen you in a couple of days. Fuck you. That's what, what uh, Skype is doing. I wish I had that person's card because I just want to thank him. Oh, well. I have my doctor's card here, but that's, that's it. 
Hmm. I'm sure the other card is here somewhere. Anyway, where are we? Oh, okay. Here comes Scott Boddicker, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. Uh, hello, uh, hello, hello, Scott. Scott. Wait, a minute. Wait a minute. We've got, We've some, got some kind of. Um, um, there we go, Scott. Good. Okay. All right. Let me see here, Charlie Wallace. Let me put him on here. Um, put him in the second place. Um, let me see here. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. I don't see him. Okay, cancel. Bring this up again. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Let me see here. Now I'll probably see him. Yeah, right there. Okay, there's Charlie Wallace. Let me see here. Okay, guys. Hi. How are you? What's, uh, what's new? Hey. Huh? What? I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah, you're doing okay. How about you, Scott? I'm doing great. Yeah, Glad good. To you're back. Yeah, yeah. You're the one that came up with uh, magnesium citrate. You must have well, had some kind of. Uh, um, uh, um, well, I, I used that once for a colonoscopy, and I had a couple of bottles left over. I, I think they're gone now, but I, I thought it was something like that. Yeah, that that was that's actually usually they try and give you the stuff or yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. It salt. And the the uh, magnesium citrate does the same thing. And it tastes good, and you can gulp it down really fast, and it's sparkling. You know, it's uh, it's 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 manageable, and it makes you you know poop like a bandit. So yep. anyway, that must be what I had last year when I had my colonoscopy. What was it? Just a little bottle of stuff, right? About ten, yeah. 10 ounces. Yeah, and I remember from the time before it was just one of the most horrible experiences of my life, and then I was just shocked when it wasn't so bad this time. Yeah, I, I think it's because the magnesium site citrate. citrate you can buy over the counter. I think this other stuff you got to get through a prescription, so it probably costs a lot more, and it's it's just all medical kickback, I think. Yeah, and it turned out I went up and got a bottle of it. Right, and brought it back, and it turns out that I, we had two bottles of it left here from other times, you know, yeah. that I had. Ah. But so but wait. it wasn't but it wasn't cherry, and it wasn't sugar free. So you oh, know, you can't use the red kind either, right? If you're doing a colonoscopy. Colonoscopy. You're, well, I don't know if that's the case. I'm, yes, you're right. You're something right. about red, yeah. no, no yeah. red drinks or grape or something. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. The, in this case, I wasn't doing it for a colonoscopy. Yeah. I was doing it. So, so you, got, you got gold up your ass? Is that what you said? No, I have <laughs> I I have gold I have gold studs in my prostate now. Yeah, not oh well, close enough. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much that's costing me. Um, Dang. Your prostate's know. worth more than your whole other oh, yeah. rest of your body. Yeah. They're what, just trying to hide it from the Germans. When I, don't when, know. when I die, the grave robbers will open up the thing and grab get my <laughs> prostate out and sell the gold <laughs> studs that are in there. Or maybe the radio well, the radioactive seeds will have been spent by then. Uh, so the only side effect of, of any of this uh, is that when I fart, a mushroom cloud will come out of my ass. But <laughs> But outside of that, it's uh, and that's all. That's what she wrote, folks. No, and nobody's calling tonight, and I think it's because nobody thinks I was going to come in tonight. You know, it's just well, uh, I was planning no, on coming fine. in last night, but the problem was that I had to do this prep, and I'm not about ready to do this prep and be doing a show. Okay, so uh, that's the reason I didn't do the show last night. Otherwise, I could have done the show. But, uh, you know, uh, this is a real adventure, actually. You know, it's the most excitement I've had in a long time. <laughs> Marjorie is sick of me talking about it, and I keep telling her, you know, come on, this is the most exciting thing that's happened to me, uh, you know, since uh, I met you. You know, <laughs> you, and prost know. you and prostate cancer are the two most exciting things that have happened to me <laughs> in the last couple of years, you know, so... But uh, uh, it it it's it was it's amazing to me. The whole process is amazing to me. And I I mentioned to them that when they did the tattoo, uh, that well I guess I can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery now. 
And the guy who was going to oh. do it was very fast to say and very seriously, oh, no, Orthodox Jews say it's okay because this is for a medical procedure. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, I, I, I felt like maybe they were like Mengele, you know, and they were tattooing me uh, for <laughs> some reason yeah. or another. But anyway, it, it, it was just, it was, it's the stuff of science fiction. And I, yeah. you know, and of course, I'm not going to feel anything with this radiation, but it is going to make me feel mildly um, um, fatigued. Fatigued. I can't even remember the word fatigue now. Um, so I don't know what to expect of me during this process, but it starts on the 27th, right after I get through with my court case, which I have to go through in a couple of weeks uh so i don't know twice. well i don't know like the uh, first day i have to be there at 9 30 in the morning but it's only half a day so i'll do a show on on that friday and then a uh, wednesday later it's a whole day and the, you know i don't know if i'm going to be able to do shows for a couple of nights that week i think i won't have any problem with the uh, with doing a show while doing the the radiology because it's every other day and it's uh, f uh at uh, what i go in at uh, 1 30 in the afternoon i'm out by three okay so i think i can do shows that night unless i'm so fatigued but you know in that case i'll just come on and let you guys talk to each other and i'll fall asleep here um you know uh why not you know so uh but the, the, that that's kind of the schedule for the show, as it were. Uh, and I don't know what's going to happen with it. And then when I get these seeds implanted, uh, that will be a one day off. That's, a, that's an outpatient thing as well. But I don't think I'll do a show that night because, uh, hell, I'm going to have radioactive seeds in my ass. You know? <laughs> so... And, and when that's all over with, outside of the fact that I may have to pee a lot and uh, have an urgency to pee, I may have to go for the Depends for a while. Uh, are, are these seeds actually in the prostate? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they embed them in the prostate, and they stay in there, and they're radioactive, and they, they eat away at the, at the bad cells in there. And then after about two months, the radiation completely depletes itself, but the seeds stay in there. So... so mm -hmm. I still don't understand. I mean, I understand good cells and cancer cells and whatnot, but it also attacks the good cells, right? No, yes. no. It, 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 cancer cells supposedly are very um, um, weak to fight off radiation, whereas good cells are. That's what I'm told. That's, I, I, see, that's what I don't understand. Now, I know, I know Charlie's like some know. sort of astrophysicist or whatever. He might, he might. I wonder if he knew more about it or whatever. But believe but. me, <laughs> these people know more. Uh, uh, these yeah. people know what they're doing, you know. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and um, uh, and I said to him today, I said the reason you're doing both, right, is you want to make sure you get it all. He says absolutely. He says that's why we're doing both. He said, I mean, we could just do the cyber knife and I may be good to go forever, but we don't know. You want to get all of it. And these seeds, he, this guy is a big, he, he made his reputation on seed implants. Okay. okay. And so he kind of designed a lot of, of the way in which it's done and so on and so forth. So, um, that being the case, uh, he, of course, wants to do the seeds as well. You know, oh, yes. Some other doctors might say, ah, we don't need the seeds. But it, is, is chemo even an option for no, prostate cancer? No, uh, at least not in my case. You know, I, you know I, mean, I, 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 I did a lot of reading of prostate cancer, and I've yet to see anything about chemo being used. I just didn't know. I, just, I figured you knew more than I did. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, a chemotherapy would probably, if, if it spread, then, sure. yes. then they yes. might do chemotherapy. <laughs> but this hasn't spread. In fact, if it spreads, what they do for prostate cancer is prostate cancer cells have a hard time surviving when there's no testosterone to feed off of. Right. Okay. 
So it diminishes them. It doesn't do away with them. It doesn't kill the cancer, but it diminishes it enough that it's not effective in any way. So it could travel to other parts of your body, and if you do the hormone therapy, it will help kill those cancers that have spread. So It's a completely different cancer than any other. It's the good cancer. No, I got the good cancer. What's that? It's a, it's like basal cell carcinoma. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah. I, I, my, my, uh, my, uh, uh, dermatologist, you know, like, oh, we found another, you know, we got to scrape this one off or whatever. He says, she says, you know, she said something like, well, it looks like we got more cancer. I said, cancer. She goes, well, but it's good cancer. Like you it's said, good it's, cancer. Good, it's good cancer. It's good cancer. Uh, mel whatever melanoma oh i i had a uh, friend who died of melanoma yeah that's that's the bad yeah skinny. that's the one that just eats away at you you know yeah spreads. Works, yeah. Uh, and you get those from a lot of time in the sun i think <laughs> I did, i've done a lot of time in the sun so yeah. i'm well, looking forward to it yeah basal cell is pretty i think pretty common if i'm not mistaken yeah it's like i believe i believe uh it strikes 10 percent of the population yeah yeah which is pretty common. So anyway, but but people just got so panicked when I said I had cancer that I was almost sorry that I even mentioned that I did. Yeah. You know, because... Well, we all know somebody that has had cancer. Yeah. But, um, you know, and this cancer, if I, if say I was in my 60s or maybe early 60s, like Phil is a good example, uh, it's much more dangerous at that age than it is yeah. at my age. Yeah. At my age... Chances are, if you live to be 80 years old, you're, you have a 70% chance of having prostate cancer. Now, mine's a little more aggressive in that it's not low risk, it's intermediate. But you can get low risk and whatever, and it's very common after the age of 80. And the com most common cause for prostate cancer at my age is the age. So, and when you reach, oh, by the way, when you reach 90, if you live that long, chances are 100% you'll have it. You know, so. I'm looking forward to hit 90 then. But I'm looking <laughs> forward to the whole process. This whole thing is like, you know, I've, I've never had a tattoo. I have a tattoo. I have four <laughs> tattoos now. <laughs> And, and, and the cost is cheap? Your medical is doing good enough for you? Uh, I think so. You know, what happens is they always send me a thing that says it costs this much, and you may owe your your provider, provider blah, blah, blah. There's, these copays are killing me. I'm spending hundreds of dollars in copays. Oh, yeah. Oh wow! But and, but and, and I'm fully insured. But, I mean, after everything is said and done, there's still just a little bit left over that I've got to pay. And I'm just expecting that they will say, well, the whole thing costs $20,000 because that's about what this, this radiation is going to be. And then the next, oh, I think it's $29,000 is what Medicare has it billed at. Okay. Oh, wow. So they're willing to take care of $29,000 worth or my, uh, uh, my sub, uh, what do you call it, the uh, supplemental that I have has to, if, if Medicare takes it, they have to pay for 20% of it. That's it. But then they'll send me a thing, and they'll say, you owe so much. I imagine it'll say, like, the cost was $29,000. You may owe your provider $3.19. <laughs> like my uh, little brother, he just went through some cancer last year. Yeah. It was uh, throat cancer, so he had a lot of surgery, and, you know, yeah. they took his larynx. It's pretty, pretty, pretty brutal cancer. But... Uh, I think he said it cost three hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and with his insurance, he had to pay the deductible or whatever his or his wife's. I think he said it was like either fifteen hundred or twenty five hundred dollars. I mean, it was like it was like basically nothing compared to the overall cost of it. But yeah, yeah, I think this. I think I may be wrong, but I think most of this is taken care of because my because Marjorie had uh, had major surgery, and I'm trying to remember what it was exactly that she had. Now, here comes Tom Yamaguchi. Um, I can't remember what it was exactly that she had, uh, but it was. Uh, uh, let me put Tom in here. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm trying to remember what she had. Uh, uh, there we go. There's there's Tom. Okay, hold on. Tom, wait a minute. Oh, there. I should put my glasses on, shouldn't I? 
Uh, and here comes Tony Magno. Um, let me see here. There we go. Tony. So I go over to this, and I go hit, put him in the number four slot. And we go Tony Magno. Uh, which one is he now? Webhead. That's it. Okay. There we go. Uh huh. There we go. Okay. Uh, no, what I was saying, she had something. Oh yeah, it was her knee, and I think it was like oh. a fifteen thousand dollar operation, and she didn't have to pay any copay at all. So I don't know. There may not be any copay on this, but if there is, I guess I'm going to have to pay it. But you know, I mean, what? Not save my life? You know. So what the hell? What? I, I forgot to ask him the one question. What if I don't do anything? How long will I live with this? And I bet his answer would have been, we don't know. You could live another 10 years with it this way, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't want to take the chance. Hello, hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. How are you two guys? Hello. How, hanging how? in there. Huh? You hanging in there? Yeah, my, you're going to laugh. My sister went to a psychic tonight, a fortune teller. <laughs> with the ladies from work, the teachers, like a dinner, and then they read your palm or whatever. I didn't go. They wanted me to go, but I didn't go. Uh, I know you don't believe in that. I don't believe in it either. Well, I could do it for her, you know. I mean, I could yeah, say the same stuff. You're gonna, you're gonna come into some kind of money, and I see yeah, happiness yeah. in your future now. You know, because they're never going to tell you something horrible like, oh, let me look at your palm. Oh, you're going to die within a week and a half. They're never going to say that. No, nah, she actually, yeah, she had a she had a good reading. They all did, like you said. The only thing that she did say that my sister said is, she said, she said, like, you know, they say the names. She was she wrote down what the lady told her and she called me. And she said, is there a joy? I'm hearing a joy. Like, you know, and my sister said that we have a cousin Joy, an older cousin. She says, is her health okay? And I'll tell you, Alex, she did have a problem with her health because she's diabetic. See, but here's, she's a here, here, here's the bullshit of it all. How do you think she got that name? To, to begin with, she never, she didn't say, um, uh, you have somebody named Joy in your family and she's going to be better or whatever, right? She, she said, is on. there somebody in your family named Joy? And if you go, no, then she goes on to something else and eventually yeah, she will hit, yeah. she will hit there's a whole process you do she here. She hit two names, though. She did hit Carol, my older cousin I, Carol. Uh, I had away. a guy on. I had a guy oh, on years yeah. ago who was a psychic, and I decided after him that I was never going to have another psychic ever on any of my shows. But to prove how phony psychics were, one night at WMCA here in New York, I told people to call up and I would uh, read their mind. You know, I, I, I'd read their future, whatever. And I was... I, 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 there was a psychic there because I wanted to prove that this was all an act, okay? And he was amazed. He said, boy, your psychic abilities are incredible. I said, no, they're not. I'm simply listening to the person and peeing off what they have to say, you know? Uh, years ago, you remember, there was a guy named Peter Herkos, and he was the psychic in the Boston Strangler case. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Remember that Tom, the Boston Strangler? Yeah. Strangler. Yeah. Remember Peter Herkos, the the psychic who supposedly figured out who the, the Boston Strangler was. I had him on my show, and he said, um, and I this is when I first knew that this is how they operated. He said, "I see you married," and I said, "No, I'm not married." He said, "But I see you married." <laughs> now, if I had said. Yes, I am married. You go, see, what a great psychic I am. Yes, you're married. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but no, I see you married. So what they're doing is they're constantly fishing. Uh, they're on fishing expeditions as, 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 as they're doing the psychic thing. What are the chances you know somebody named Joy? Anybody here know anybody named Joy? I do. That's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do too, Charlie. Do okay. I was like, how about, how about you, uh, Tom? You that. Do you know anybody named Joy? I've known several people named Joy. And you know what? Okay. She told so, my mother. Sure. Listen, you want to laugh, Alex? She told my mother, right? And my mother's ready to call my aunt Barbara and say you got to contact Joy. She says, "Ma, ten o'clock at night, you got to drive this woman." Because I said you can't tell her anything. Well, she doesn't know anything. Here we go. Because my mom's gonna get yeah. home. But I mean, she, you, you know, so so we we just found out by by talking to our people here 
that so they four out of four people on the panel right now, right. Yeah. with the exception of me. I got a little Mexican when she said that. I was like, really? And then she pulled me in. I was like, you should have came. I was afraid to go because I know she would get me right away. I'd be, I'd be like, oh, God, <laughs> I would believe it. It's a waste of fucking money. Okay. It paid but sixty five dollars and she got sixty five dollars. You, you got a dinner with it though, two dollars. Huh? So it wasn't bad. It was like an Irish Listen, home. she could come to me and I'd do a reading on her and charge her twenty bucks and give her an orgasm on top of it. You know? <laughs> she, and my mother's all happy now, but I said, Ma, she's gonna be fine, yeah. Joy. We know she's diabetic. Yeah. Yeah. If she uh, drops dead tonight, I'll laugh. I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, yes, no, Tom, Tom, to Tom, hey, wait a minute. Uh, okay, okay, calm down, calm down, Tony, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just was remembering a great documentary that came out a few years ago about uh, uh, James Randi, yeah. called An Honest Liar. Mm -hmm. If you don't get a chance to see it. Oh, I've seen it, I've seen it. In fact, I know Randi. Uh, I knew him through Penn, yeah. and, Penn and Teller. Uh, when I was living down right. in Miami, yeah. they took me over to see Randi. Uh, and he, he he spent most of his life debunking these people. Oh, so he was like a Houdini. Yeah. No, he wasn't you know like should, a Houdini. Yeah. He was trying to debunk, debunk all them. these psychics and psychic healers. Yeah. He hated psychic healers. He did, okay. You know. Oh, yeah. Peter Popoff. Oh, well, you asked uh, oh, yeah. if, oh, if, yeah. uh, Pat, if Patrick would call us. He, he, I had him do a number on Peter Popoff. That was funny. We wound that up having so Peter funny. Popoff have to spend a fortune trying to get money out of Patrick. <laughs> One time they asked for uh, a donation. So I suggested this, and he sent them $20 in pennies. <laughs> that uh, was funny. Uh, <laughs> collect. It's money. <laughs> you know, because they had to pay for the, uh, for the, for the money to come in. Uh, and and so it it cost him about I don't know fifty bucks or something for the f twenty dollars <laughs> in pennies. <laughs> so, you know that was the way. We, well, you know how, we, how they got pop off. Uh, Randy got pop off. He and got him. How he got him was he 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 realized that he was using a radio transmitter, and his wife was backstage. And she had been kind of talking to people in the audience before the show started and was able to get information about them. And then she would be on a radio frequency and be calling, talking to Peter through a, through an earphone and telling him, uh, oh, that woman in the front row, go see her. She has a husband named Bob. He's sick. He's got cancer. Okay. And she, he would go down there and do it. Well, uh, Randy heard about, uh, figured that there was something like that, and that he got a radio guy who sat around playing around with frequency analyzers and found the frequency and found the audio. Oh shit! And then he recorded <laughs> it. He recorded it, and then he took it and synced it to the TV show. Oh my god! And uh, there you go with Popov, and you can hear his wife saying, the per guy in the front row, and you see him heading for the front row, oh, you know, God. and he's the one on the end, yeah, his name is Bob, you know, and he, she, he goes, uh, your name's Bob, right? You know, and uh, it, it killed Randy. He went on the J Johnny Carson show with the tape and ruined Randy's career. Uh, not Randy's career, but uh, Popov's career. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there were still people who would follow him, you know. When we finally caught up with him with with my Patrick stunt, uh, he uh, he was still going. He was still doing his thing, you know. And I hate people like that. I just hate them. I think they're 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 the worst kind of people in the universe. That and 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 urologists. But anyway. <laughs> No, I like I love urologists. One urologist saved my life. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank God. Yeah, the yeah. college degree came in handy, Tom. Yeah, but uh, why do you want to keep sticking your finger up people's asses? I wonder if they no pull in the ear. Do you think they do good money? What are they pulling here? I don't know. I'll tell you. You you're going like that, Scott. But I don't know if doctors are making the same kind of money they used to make. Yeah. You know. Um, and and part of the reason for that is is that they're they're 
uh, it's a question of what they're going to, they have to be able to take insurance money. They have to be able to take Medicare. And what they get paid by insurance companies and Medicare is a fraction of what they charge. I mean, if you go in there, you're not insured and you pay full price. Uh, it, it, they love you. They love to see you coming. Oh, they want to get you more. Yeah, but if they're dealing with an insurance company, the insurance company goes, well, this is all we'll pay. And so they just pay that. And so a lot of these doctors are hurting. I mean, uh, a lot of them are going to HMOs and stuff where they get a salary. Um, and um, uh, my, uh, my uh, oncologist is at, Chi as it is at Mount Sinai. And uh, I think he is hired by Mount Sinai. He's paid by Mount Sinai. Now, whether he can negotiate, because he's kind of a star oncologist, you know, and whether he can negotiate more money than other people would, I, I have no idea. But you know, but it's uh, you know it it, it it still it's it's very expensive. I mean, uh, what the medicine costs today, and you know, I go into the hospital and I'm going, walking down the hallways and I'm seeing mm -hmm. all these machines there and all these litter, you know, these gurneys and and I'm going, how much does it cost to keep a hospital going? Mm -hmm. And they're doing this all off of insurance money and Medicare. Mm -hmm. And it, and if you are a uh, if you are a uh, 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 a urologist, all your people for the most part are older, and so there you have to take Medicare. Yeah, that that would be yeah. Yeah, you would think yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, so, uh, but I, you know, uh, who knows how much this is going to cost me. Maybe, maybe if it's several thousand dollars, I don't care. It's my fucking life, you know. Yeah. But I don't That's... think it'll cost that. I fully expect to see a thing saying, and you, you, you pay your provider, you know, 35 cents. Yeah. So I don't know what that's going to be, but... Uh... Anyway, so I, uh, you know, this is another adventure, I guess. This is the most exciting thing that's happened to me, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, is it all done to chemo, Alex? Are oh, you no, done? no, no chemo. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, radiation. No, I haven't even started. I just got tattooed today. Oh, I thought you were starting today. No, I got tattooed okay. today. Oh. Okay. I have four tattoos. Oh, so, right. so I'm guessing you're starting next week then or something? No, I'm starting on the 27th. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that'll be over fast then. Oh, five days. But every other day, five days every other day. So it's a week and a half. And then I have the, uh, four, two weeks later, I will have the uh, seeds implanted, and that's an hour uh, thing, and it's, um, it's under anesthesia. And then I'm, I, you know, as soon as I can get out of the bed and I guess pee, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that was the hardest right? part. It, how many, it's all guys here, right? Doctor yeah. says to you, yeah. here's a cup, pee in the cup. How many of you can go immediately? I almost, I almost peed out of the cup. I got nervous when I was taking the physical. I had to go to the bathroom, and I was worried about if I didn't, you know, if I went too much. But it's hard to well, do my, that my, the my, where I made my big mistake is I peed before I went into the operating room. If I hadn't peed before I went into the operating room, I probably would have been able to pee better into that bottle. But she hands yeah. me this bottle that I stick my dick in, and I'm sitting there waiting for this thing. It's dripping out and drops. You know, it's like it's like an IV. You know, yeah, a little bit. Make yeah. the water run or something. That's yeah. what my mother does. She got to go to the bathroom and I got to put the floor. I think with Marjorie, when she had when she had something, maybe it was her back surgery or whatever, they wouldn't let her go till she took a good dump. Yeah, and I'm saying if you're constipated enough. for the rest of your life, are they never going to let you leave the hospital? Just eat some raisins or prunes or something. I'm right. sorry, I'm stuck here at the hospital. I can't <laughs> urinate. If <laughs> urinate. <laughs> That's got to be a shitty feeling, though, you know. But I think they have that thing about peeing just about any surgery you have now. Yeah. You got to pee. Yeah. I guess they I, won't let you go until you pee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> you, you know, it's got, there are kind of some funny answers you could have for that, but I won't, won't get into it. it it's just, I, I'm amazed uh, that it's, uh, it doesn't uh, really... Um, uh, it, 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 the most pleasant part of this whole thing was this thing I went through today, except the setup for it, 
the prep was like having a colonoscopy, and I'm going, what am I doing this for? You know. Oh, you did a colonoscopy? No, they want they just want everything in your system clean. Okay. I don't have to do this. Uh, did you have to drink the drink again? Uh, no, I, I have to had to do the magnesium okay. citrate. Yeah, but I won't have to do it again. All I have to do is the milk of magnesia, which is such has such a wonderful, exuberant taste. Oh it. God, it's terrible. I got to do the colonoscopy in the summer. It's bad. That t- my brother said that the drink is the worst part. You were saying, Alex. Well, right? the, no, the, that that drink, the drink you're talking about, is what they were talking about, and it's a, it's what a gallon of this stuff. This, uh, oh, you yeah. Know, the, 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 if, if you ever have to do a colonoscopy, say I want to do the magnesium citrate. That's okay, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, that's what I did last night, you know. Um, and that's what they told me to take, so I was very happy with that. But uh, uh, but now I don't have to do that. I just have to take milk and magnesia and have a fleet. I bought I've bought now a six pack of fleet enemas. Okay. Oh my sure, just in case. Yeah, I mean, and I'm thinking of going to Costco and getting the twenty fours because I figure I'm going to be needing them. You know. <laughs> oh my god. Because I've got I've got let's see here I've got five uh, five. Uh, uh, Five of them that- I need to use. I only have four in the house, but I have to have five because I've got five days of, of these treatments. And then I'm sh- I, I'm sure he's going to have me do a fleet enema again, when he does the seeds. You know, is that that's got to hurt though? No, because I remember getting an enema as a kid. My mother, I had to get one one time. That's where they stick the thing in and they start like it was an uncomfortable feeling. Well, it's just a, it's just the. How many here? Like have, a liquid? This is this is really great talk. How many here have had a fleet enema? I think I might. I could ask her, but I think she gave me one time. I couldn't go to the bathroom. It's just I a it's enema. just a bottle of stuff, and you just stick it in your ass and push. You know, yeah, it was uncomfortable. Well, it was uncomfortable. I think today getting it in because I had had so many things shoved up my ass in the last couple of days. It was really, really rather rough and raw. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you want to know uh, it's more information i think than anybody wants to know out there but, mm-hmm. but i'm going is i can't even, i'm 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 like a woman going is it in yet you know i mean it was uh it was a, a <laughs> terrible terrible thing so i mean and i know folks this all sounds disgusting but this is what is exciting for me at 80 years of age this is uh, this is giving me a, a will to live here you know but I'll tell you what gets me about it, that I love about it, is it when I was a kid, I was into science fiction, you know? And the idea that radiation was going to, like, save my life, you know? A lot of these processes, by the way, I'm going through right now, 10 years ago, you wouldn't be going through those processes. You'd be going through some... They'd probably be cutting out your prostate, Ooh. you know? Uh, but there's no need for that right now. You know, and the radiation treatments, they were... Two months worth. Now it's down to five days. You're in, you're out. You know, yeah. so and you get to see the sci-fi. It's not just some little radiation machine that goes and just does your whole midsection. This is a a, a robot arm that aims it at the right place. You know, and then goes to another position. And that's why they have all the dots on me and the gold posts inside the prostate and all of that. You know, so I love it. It's uh, it's uh, I I love science fiction and this made me love it even more. So anyway, uh, any uh, uh, I guess I haven't seen you guys since they had the uh, the Golden Globes or as I like to call them the Phony Fuck Awards. I been, I was wrong. It's not ninety seven people who vote for them. Uh, it's eighty seven. Oh, eighty seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, fewer. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and. Um, um, I think the right film won for best picture. Oh, the 1917. It looks 1917. really good. It's really good. Yeah. It's really, really good. Uh, and uh, but we watch, boy, we watch. You know, we get all these screeners, right? You know, the films. We watch two of the worst films of the year, and I don't know why Renee Zellweger won for best actress. She was. I didn't see she was, was good god out? fucking awful. She, she was, was pathetic. She, could she sing at all? No. And how dare you have her sing, and not use a not use like a music track by Judy Garland? 
I mean, how, uh, the temerity yeah. of saying I'm going to do, I'm going to sing as well as Judy Garland. Fuck you, Renee, and your nose job or whatever else you've got going. For she you. looks like a different person when that speech was so pretentious. Yes, it does. It's almost like thank you for remembering me again for what, like, like it was coming. Yeah, well, we wanted really? to forget you, and you came back. <laughs> You know, she, and I want to uh, see it, but now you're telling me she ruins a portrait. And by the I way, I, I I want to take something back. The night before yeah. the, uh, the night before the uh, Golden Globes, we rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We went to the theater to see it, and I wasn't I wasn't that in love with it because oh, I liked it. well, I wasn't that in love with it because I guess I was over expecting with Quentin Tarantino. And when I left, I was un, I was not happy with the film. I, I, what I said was, it was the, the worst Quentin Tarantino film, but it wasn't a bad film. You know, it, it, for it, for anybody else, it's a great film. Okay, so we watched it again, and I this time I came into it with my with the with the feeling that I had had about it, and walked away with a much better feeling about it. And I think it's really a very good film. It's still, yeah. it's still Tarantino's worst, but for Tarantino, that's still great, you know. So, Alex, do you think the ending was a little too much over the top, or no? Can no, I, it's like top? it's like he always does. He he has always in some of his films yeah. reinvented history. In the in uh, uh, Glorious Bastards, uh, Hitler was killed by Brad Pitt. Come on, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, Hitler dies in that theater. Uh, that's not the way yes. Hitler died, you know. And so the fact that this thing, I won't, I won't ruin it for people, ends no. differently than it ended in, in real life uh, is kind of an interesting yeah. uh, conceit. You know, I, I, I enjoyed it. But uh, 1917 is maybe, the, keep, maybe the best picture I I've seen. I also in a, watched once upon a time again at home a second time and I, I liked it the second time. I was wondering if he had additional scenes with Manson that I thought do you think he should have put him in a little more maybe? No, no. Or no. Absolutely not. No. No. No need to. They shouldn't have put him in in the first place. You know. You know who those kids are. You you know what's gonna happen. You know. Who who's trying to call? It was a oh, missed call from some phone. Well, hmm. fuck him. Uh, let me see here. Uh, but, uh, um, and then tonight, what did we watch? We watched this film with Jamie Foxx. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. And it's, he's nominated. It's a mediocre film at best. You know, a lot of these films are mediocre. I'm amazed that they even get nominated. Oh, I'll tell you what I saw. I'll tell you what I saw. Uh, my friend Jack Garfine died, but what he left behind were all his director's Guild screeners. So I was over at, uh, with Natalia on, I think it was Sunday, and uh, or Saturday or Sunday, and uh, I noticed on the table was uh, uh, the latest Star Wars picture. Well, I didn't see it. Did you like it? I thought it absolutely sucked. Oh shit! I'm gonna have to still see it though to see how he wraps no, it no, up. No, 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 no. He ruined it. No, you know what I'm. What I thought uh, immediately. Number one, the first three. Well, the first two pictures were terrific. The third was a disappointment. Okay, you know, Ewoks. Come on, teddy bears with lips. Yeah. Give me a break. I kind of like that. The you know, Jim Henson stuff. But that was. Well, weird. that wasn't Jim Henson. Was it? So who did that then? The Midgets who did that. Me? Midgets in costumes did that. That's they what was so terrible about it. Right. Yeah. You know, what's his name? That the, what, who's the short guy that uh, plays in everything? Uh, was one of the Peter what, Dinklage? No, no, not Peter Dinklage. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah. He was in. Uh, he was in that other Lucas film uh, about the. Well, anyway. He did the show about the midget. His sh the show he did with um, God. My mind is just a blank. Forget it. Just uh, write me off tonight. Um, but anyway, um, it, it, uh, but the next three pictures were terrible, basically. But at least they were written by Lucas, and he kind of tried to keep the mythology going. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, Tom. Tom? Tom, can you hear me, Tom? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've got a really weak signal. I, I know how. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you fine. Okay, because I've got a weak signal on my end. I was going to say Warwick Davis. Warwick Davis. Warwick Davis yeah. is the word. Yeah. yeah. He, he played one of the Ewoks, and then a bunch of other midgets played the rest, you know. And maybe some kids, little kids in the costumes, too. Anyway, uh, the next three pictures were not good, but at least they were Lucas, and he, you know, he had a certain sense of the mythic quality of his, of his tome. When they got to this three, it became product. Just nothing but product. We're going to churn out three more Star Wars pictures and see how much money we can make. And this last one was terrible. And I'm going to tell you why it was terrible, because it it violates so many uh, laws of time and space. They're out. They land on the top of one of these uh, battleship cruisers, right? One of these star cruisers, right? Right. And they open up the back, and horses run out with people on them. And they're running all over the outside of the, of the spaceship. What's wrong with that picture? Uh, what are they breathing? Vacuum. They'd be dead in a second. What are they breathing? How are they breathing? And they're running around and fighting and blah, 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 blah. I'm going, huh? This makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Now... And I will have to, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? Adam Driver, who plays the Kyle, ba- Ren. Uh, Kyle Ren. Okay. Uh, yeah. at, at the end of the picture, I'm not ruining it for anybody because I couldn't ruin this picture for anybody. It's ruined by its mere direction <laughs> and its writing. Uh, Kylo Ren uh, says to the emperor, who, by the way, is still alive. Oh, I heard, yeah, Palpatine. Yeah, and says, he's uh, as, as he's... As he's flying down, he says, that's the end of you. And he says, um, no, this is not the end of Skywalker. Or, or I mean, this is the end of a Skywalker or something, Kylo Ren says. To begin with, he's not a Skywalker. What is he? Uh, Come on, son. Tony, you know the you know the series. Yeah, he's, I think he's uh, Leia's son, wasn't he, Harrison Ford? Yeah, so he's either... Yeah. He's either, so, he's either uh, uh, so, ben is his first name. Either Ben Organa, if you want to use the mother's name, or Ben Solo. He's not yeah. Ben Skywalker, this which was Luke's K- name. How does he fuck that up? Yeah. So I'm he's going, bit, what? <laughs> you know, I'm going to have what? to see this now just to laugh at the movie. Well, no, what, what bothers me is at least follow some kind of decent logic here. You know, I mean, just common sense, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. I gotta see this now. Yeah. You know what? Maybe they should just retire the movie then totally. Well, the franchise. They, they just stick to the TV. Well, they're not they're not retiring the franchise, they're retiring the history. That that history. Okay. But you've got the Mandalorian on which on, gotta, you said on it's Disney, great. Watch which it. is I'm terrific. Gonna... It is yeah. incredibly good. It's everything you wanted out of Star Wars. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm In fact, I'm why, it so I can why they it. didn't give what's his name, the guy who produces that? Uh, oh, God. Now my mind's about Oh, well, I know who you're talking about, Favreau. John Favreau. Why they didn't give him the job of doing all these last three pictures, because he seems to know that universe better than J.J. Abrams, that hack, ever knew. You know, so... Um, um, so that was one of the other pictures I watched, and it's three hours and 40 minutes long, and it just goes on and on and on. And occasionally when I'm really being bored by something, I'll speed through it. You know, I'll speed watch it. But this, I watched every bloody frame of this thing, and I went, <laughs> you know, it just doesn't, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense here. Anyway, that's that's my story, and I'll stay with it. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the world, okay? For the, yes, uh, Tom. 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 Tom's Hi. frozen. Oh. Uh, I think yeah. I'm going to have to go. I'm fro. Yeah, I've got a, a weak signal. 
Can you hear me? Okay. Well, uh, all right. If you feel you got to go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you fine. But you can't hear us, can you? Okay. Well, I have a weak signal, but I, before I go, what's that? I see. You're having a hard time hearing me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's just uh, call it quits, I guess, okay? Yeah, I've got a weak signal. I've got to go. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Okay, let me let me put uh, let me see here. Let me put uh, let me see here. Let me put uh, uh, somebody in his place. Okay, so we'll put uh, we'll put uh, um, Webhead in his place. Okay, and uh, sure. there we go. Okay, there there's uh, yeah. So nobody's calling tonight. Uh, let's see here. Schmoody isn't calling. Uh, Patrick isn't calling. Uh, Phil is somewhere else, which I'm glad you, you're probably glad about, Scott. You, uh, you know, I I was on and I saw comments and he, he said uh, he had a comment on your screen. I don't know if you saw it. It's up at the top. Uh, and it's, uh, it's right at the beginning of the show. And he says, he lands in 20 minutes. So I figured, well... If he doesn't call from the car, yeah, I know he's probably listening now anyway. Oh, yeah, it says but, landing in 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so, but anyway, it's, it's, it's not Phil. I just, I can't do both your show and Jack's show. And, and you know, it makes a long night yeah. sitting there on my yeah. hands, But So what do you think about what's going on lately? Well, that, do I? Huh? Uh, I'm just, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm kind of like in Nancy Pelosi's court uh, that this guy has got some, some kind of mental yeah. illness, illness. I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm not, I'm being serious. I yeah. mean, I don't care. No, me you know, too. He, he is, he is not right. And, and she prays for him. And I, I try to remember to pray for him when I go to church every day, but it's, I sometimes forget, but. You know, I don't feel too bad about forgetting either, but, no. but uh, yeah, he, he, he is, he is, and, and the thing that really bothers me is, you know, he's got this mental illness and the people who follow him must have the same illness. I don't, I don't know why, or why they can't see it. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's, it's, it's sad. It's just like she says, it's sad. Well, it's, you know, to begin with, I think if you go to church and you're going to pray for anybody, pray for us. Yeah. You know, oh, I, 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 yeah. yeah, because uh, uh, we're the ones that are really in trouble here. Yeah, uh, this is a man who has brought us to the brink of war yeah. by his hubris, you know, and his inability to know what's right and what's wrong. Right. And uh, I, I'm just, you know, I just don't know if that's gonna if, if it's gonna fly much you know uh, uh he's trying to backtrack everything here's a guy who went out killed somebody all right this is not just yeah you it's, know it's 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 yeah you can't say it's murder but i think it is you know I'm well sorry. he ordered a man to be killed all yes. right all right, right gave the order to have a man killed uh he then kills him and then, of course, uh, the Iranians decide as some kind of a punitive action, not a complete punitive action, but a small punitive action, they would fire on the air base. Okay? This is what we can do. Yeah, this Iran is, said, this is what we can do. Yeah. We'll tell you we're going to do it so we can clear it out. Yeah. And, yeah. They actually went out of their way to tell everybody what they were doing so they yeah, could right. make sure nobody got hurt. But they want like we dropped the atomic bomb on on Hiroshima and whatnot. We dropped leaflets at people you might want to leave. Did we do that? Yeah, oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. They they dropped uh, they they dropped the I didn't know that. In Japanese and is supposed to have warned these people to get the hell out of town. And you know, you can believe us or not, but you know, the, I think the third time they were gonna probably drop <laughs> leaflets on a town, they, they said, Well, maybe we've got to consider leave you know, but anyway. Yeah, I'll look it up. I thought they. But did, anyway, but. anyway, uh, so he starts saber rattling about how terrible it, what he's going to do if they try anything and blah blah blah. And then when they try it, yeah, he just says, "I'm going to put sanctions against you." Well, I, well they've that, already got sanctions against them, you know. 
what are, what are you going to do? What more sanctions can you place on them? You know? Oh, and I also liked how he said something like, well, now we got to get this deal in so everyone can live with it and be, be happy and satisfied. But there was a deal in. He just didn't yeah. like, you know? Yeah, well, here, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me backtrack here a little bit because here, here's the reason uh, for uh, killing the Iranian guy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Soleimani. <laughs> Soleimani. Uh, Soleimani. Uh, the reason, reason that he claims they did it was because this person was responsible for the death of many Americans and was planning maybe on uh, bombing the embassy. Well, uh, you know, yep. what, what Islamic regime uh, hasn't considered bombing the American yeah. embassy, you know. Uh, your chances they're going to bomb an American embassy somewhere, pretty good. I mean, you've got a pretty good chance that that's going to happen. That's kind of what generals do. They, they plan right. things, you now, know. First of all, remember that to Suleimani, we are the enemy. All right. Mm -hmm. And so what's his job in his position but to fight the enemy? Yes. So, you know, uh, I used to use the saying that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. And that's really what this yeah. is all about. And I had Phil here on, I think it was last Friday, saying that, well, the, uh, the uh, Iranian people are happy this guy's dead because they didn't yeah. like him. Did you see yeah. how many people were in the streets of Iran? Yeah, there was yeah. a that a big crowd. They had turnout. forty people die being trampled to death at the funeral. Yeah. There was more people getting was it killed. Was fifty? I'm sorry. Oh my god. That's so true. yeah, I mean, huh? It, 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 it's kind of like uh, you know, an analogy I was like thinking is Hitler. Hitler was a pretty bad guy, and I don't think there was a whole lot of people that liked him. Right. Okay. But General Rommel was a well-respected tank commander, right? Mm -hmm. General. Hero. Even, even Patton said, I've studied his book. I know all about him. He, he, was Rommel a terrorist? No, he was simply a guy fighting for his country. And that, you know, and this guy trying to portray him as, as being this absolutely horrible person. And I, I, I you know, um, in spite of the fact that all he was doing was, was fighting for the home team, as it were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and he killed. Uh, he he trained people. He didn't kill anyone. He trained a lot of people, and and you know while well, he might have killed some people when he was younger, but but all the ISIS, you know the 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 the, the Sunni Muslims, yeah, are in in Iraq, and they were you know killing pretty much the Shia. So yeah. he went from Iran, which is Shia. To Iraq to, to Get, kill the Sunnis. To Sunni. kill the Sunnis, yeah. yeah. Which are ISIS, basically, right? What so was what he, was he was actually on our side for most of the part of the you know this yeah. last well, yeah. bit. What was uh, what was um, Saddam Hussein? Was he Sunni or Shia? I can't remember. He, he was Sunni. He, he was, was Sunni. Sunni. He's Sunni. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and the Iranians are Shia. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, but all I'm saying is. The United States is their enemy, you know, plain and simple. Um, and so you're going to go fight your enemy, yeah. and you're going to try and do the best you can in fighting your enemy. And the United States was in Iraq killing other, I got to get it right, Sunni. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so of course, Iran wants to protect their brother Muslims, you know, and and and, yeah. and pretty much the way the way Malcolm Nance explained it is. All the, all the um, um, Sh Shiite live yeah. in in that area, Yemen. I think Shia is the term for a group of them. Shia. Shia. Yeah, yeah, not I, Shiites. I think it's Shia, if I'm not Shia, mistaken. But it, yeah, it, 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 and it, and and but anyway, uh, and I I knew I knew you know work through words and whatnot. Uh, quite, a, uh, you know, four, five, six you know, Iranian. Yeah, and you know, they 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 were great people. I thought you know. Yeah. Stirred. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, so I mean, um, um, I just felt that, uh, and uh, on top of that, our uh, Secretary of, of State couldn't come up with the goods when asked. Well, what exactly <laughs> did he do? 
You know, what exactly was he going to do? Why was this justified? He kept coming up with all these answers that didn't really add up to anything. You know, at, at no. the beginning, he said it was imminent. And then he's like, well, uh, you know. And then they came, oh, well, they were going to bomb the embassy. Yeah, that's what it was. Anyway. Yeah, well, uh, usually they will bomb our embassy if they get the chance. Okay, anybody. Well, they I would they, bomb our embassy if I had the chance. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's a nice embassy. Huh? Did oh, they, they, oh they no, I, I'll tell you what I did once. This is, this is, years ago, I, I, what happened is Kent State happened. I don't know if you remember the Kent State incident, but yeah. the students at this college were uh, shot by the ROTC. Four of them got killed. Right. And that happened while I was working at WMCA here in New York. And Ronnie and I had to go on, had a vacation plan to go to London. And I said, I don't know if I can leave because uh, this whole thing with Kent State is taking place and I've got to be here to help protest it and so on. She said, you've taken a year without a vacation. You're taking this vacation. Okay. So she grabbed me. She tore me away from my post and we got on a plane and we went to England. And we booked into this hotel. We booked into a fairly fancy hotel on uh, the square, okay? I'm trying to remember the name of the hotel. It's a very famous hotel. And um, we go to sleep. We wake up the next morning. There's cheering outside. And I'm thinking to myself, what, what's going on out there? And I open up the windows. And there are mobs of people protesting. And what are they protesting? On the other corner, other side of the square, was the American embassy. Mm. So I went out there with Ronnie, and we went and threw rocks and stones at the American embassy. <laughs> <laughs> a new story, well, a story I've never heard on yeah, this show. Yeah, yeah, and I haven't thought about it till now. Okay, that's wow. great. Yeah, no, we, we, we threw rocks at the American embassy. And, it was, and the, the British were very nice to us. They would go, oh, you're American, and uh, we're so sorry for your loss. I mean, they, were, they really, you know, said, we, we, hate, we don't hate you, but we hate your government, you know. And I said, Where, give me a rock, and I threw it at the American embassy. The other thing they did, oh, this is great. The British are very civil in their in, in how they handle their protests. They figure the best way to handle a protest is to not go in with clubs and stuff and cars and tanks and stuff like that. Go in with horses. And the reason to go in with horses is who's going to hit a horse? Right. You know, who's going to be do something nasty and vile to a horse? Mm -hmm. So these demonstrators had no way to go up against the horses but they found a way. What they did is they brought marbles with them to the demonstration. And what they would do is throw marbles down on the ground. And when the horses saw them, they wouldn't walk on them because they would fall. So they stopped all the horses by throwing marbles down on the ground. In case you ever have a demonstration where you know they're going to be horses, you know how to protect against the horses. You know. So... But that was that, that, that demonstration, and I felt very good about it. I said, well, now I feel okay that I left. You know, uh, this is terrific. So anyway, that was that, that, was that. and you know, that's my story. I'm sticking to it, and I got 20 minutes left until I go, can go pee because this operation he did the other day has caused me to pee a little more than I normally would. Mm. This is, this is going to be a real pleasant uh, uh, process. But I'll live another year and a half. So, you know. Um, I know. Yeah. And you should get more than that. Can huh? Well, it's, at least it's quick, though. A couple of days. Treatment. Yeah, but the after, you know, the after effects, the, the uh, oh. side effects are, they're not brutal, but they're annoying. Okay. I mean, those, those depends. At Costco are getting to look pretty good right now. You know, oh. Oh. Hey, my mom's got a whole box inside. Yeah, you know, I'll be doing the show if I feel like I'm feeling now. I'll be doing the show after all of this and say to you, "Keep talking." I got to go pee right now. <laughs> you know, and that'll go on for a couple of months. 
Uh, let's see here. What are people writing? Forbin Colossus is about the only one out there writing anything. However, we have a lot of people watching us tonight, and we've only wow. got, what, three people here? My That's God. Crazy. You know. Uh, Charlie, who do you feel is uh, going to win yep. the nomination? I don't know. <laughs> do you have any? You know, I want to get it, but, you know, even if she doesn't get it, I'll vote for whoever does get it. Wait a minute. Who do you want to have get it now? I'm uh, still kind of in the Elizabeth Warren camp. Is she still even a factor? Oh, yeah. Really? She's I... been... Uh, second second place in, in Iowa now. In second place in Iowa. Who's in first place? Biden. 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 Where's yeah. Where's Buttigieg? He's like he's like number four, and uh, I think Biden was like twenty nine. Elizabeth Warren was like twenty twenty two, something like that. And 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 Buttigieg is last one. He's all the way down to seven. But I swear he the other week he was ahead. Really? I I, I you know. Yeah. Well, that, that could all change too. You know. But sure. it, it's I'll tell you, it's all a function of money. Uh, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to vote for Bernie. Wait a minute. Here comes uh, Kevin. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to put him in a different spot. Hold on. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. I've got to put him in a uh, cancel. Don't want that. Okay, cancel. Um, let me see here. Let me just get rid of Tony. That, uh, no, I'm, I'm not getting rid of Tony. I'm getting rid of him in, in his space right now. And then I can do this. Okay, and there we you see because if I if I suddenly put Tony up there, uh, you, you, uh, you know you would get uh, uh, I don't know. Anyway, hello there, Kevin. How are you? How are you, Alex? Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Uh, well, no, this is is this this isn't our first show since the New Year. Oh no, yeah, that's right. We were on last. No, week. no, it just happened. yeah, yeah. But I take the week off. I mean, we got a lot of people listening to us right now. But I, I take the uh, take a couple of days off, and nobody calls. You know, it's it's amazing. Uh, they've forgotten me. They probably figured I died on the on the on the operating table. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I, the one thing about the drug they put you out on, I have often said this, is like they edited 15 minutes out of your life. You know, it's like you go. Well, this is really nice. Hello. Wow. So what, what, did, what did they use? Propofol. You know. Oh, wow. yeah. The thing that killed Michael Jackson. Yeah. I, I almost like the stuff that they, they kind of put you in halfway there. Well, this is, from what I understand, this, I don't know. I should have, I should have asked the, the, uh, the anesthesiologist about the drug itself. But I think it's what they call a twilight drug. It kind of puts you out and you... Uh, you you don't feel anything. You don't know anything's going on, and then when they stop it, you just come to, you know. And the yeah, advantage when they, that, that, when they put that implant in, I was awake the whole time, but I felt like I was gone. But I was awake. But yeah. I was gone. But I was, but awake, I was awake. But I was but gone. gone. Yeah. So you're kind of drifting, man. Yeah. Are no. you cutting me open? Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. So you? Wow. Oh well, yeah. I was I was wide awake. And they were talking to me, but, you know, they said, uh, how are you feeling? I said, well, I feel a little funny. Okay, well, we'll give you a little bit more. Well, the next one, I'm going to be out for about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, yeah. that's when they'd really knock you out, probably. No, I was pretty knocked out on this, but my hand started hurting like crazy where the, you know, because they said it would uh, hurt yeah. a little bit when they put it in. And oh. then I went, my whole hand was like, oh, I was in pain. And he said, I'll put, he th put, threw a numbing agent in there. Oh yeah, so that it would uh, would go away the pain, you know. But it's a it's a good drug. I mean, it's great the drugs and everything, you know. And the fact that uh, when you when you go out, you wake up and it's all over. It's been done. Yeah, you know. Uh, and as I said, the fact I'll, that you wake up is the good part. The the good part is that you wake up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's and I, I don't. I, I, I'll bet this doctor hasn't had anybody die on the table, or if he has, it was a, like of a cardiac arrest or something else that he, you know. You know what they do now, though. The trouble is with 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 hospitals and doctors. They are so afraid of getting sued 
that they cross the T's and dot the I's, right? Like this mm-hmm. hospital wouldn't let me leave the hospital till I peed. Why? They don't want to get sued, right? Uh, they had me go to my doctor at a cost of a copay of 26 bucks to me to get a, a, a whole setup to make sure I was okay for an operation to be put under anesthetic. Anytime you oh go under anesthetic, but you can't go to them. You got to go to another, your own doctor. And that wow. doctor's got to approve you for the operation. Now, why is that? Is that because they want safety factors and they want to make sure you're in good? No, they don't give a shit. What they give a shit about is they don't want to get sued if anything goes wrong. Yeah. Well, that so, guy said it was okay. So really what's happening, what you're having out there in the, in the medical profession is all doctors are practicing what's called defensive medicine. You know, mm-hmm. they're not doing what they think is best for you. They're doing whatever they think is safest for them. And so, and, you know. And uh, I'll tell you from experience that when you do sue, they sue everybody that was touched anything. Really? Even the parking lot that you parked your car in. Why, were you so, involved so, in a suit like that? Yeah. Yeah, and they did sue everybody, including the guy everybody. who took your, took your ticket, everybody. your car at the parking Even lot? Even the guy that opened the frickin' front door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? And they just slowly eliminate them as they go along. Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Well, you know, I mean, I think that doctors should be able to be sued for malpractice. However they shouldn't have to be as frightened as they are of everything. I mean, I can't tell you how many forms I've signed. My doctor today, before I was going in to get the setup for the radiology, had me sign a form, a release form. I will also tell you from experience that when you get those forms, when you're in the deposition, that they take those forms and they go, eh, that's nothing. Well, I mean, I you know, I don't you know. Signed this? Yeah. I don't I Whatever. I don't know what I was signing. I could have been signing away my firstborn child, although that would have been a <laughs> yeah, long time nothing. ago. It's nothing. Yeah, put that over there. No worries. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. You know, that, that means nothing. It's a piece of paper. Yeah, it's a piece of paper. <laughs> well, you know, it, it it was a lot of work, you know, uh doing. It. But anyway, so so uh I I I I can't tell you how many forms I signed. Oh, by the way, the question I was asked constantly by any person I would be doing anything with, whether it was an anesthesiologist or the assistant to the anesthesiologist or my doctor or the people, every one of the people at this, uh, at this radiology oncology place that I went to today, they all keep asking the same question over and over again. What's your what's name? Your what? What's, what's your, your birthday? And what's your birthday? And what's your birthday? Why do they do that? They, they asked me that when I went to get my blood, and I've gone from the front room to the back room. Yeah. What's your name? What's your birth date? Just to get yeah. your blood today. Is that to make sure you're not the wrong person? Yeah. Well, there could be uh, another Alex Bennett in the building at the time. Yeah. Those other two people in the building. Yeah, but is there another Bennett Schwarzman? <laughs> well, that's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> the legal thing, I guess. Yeah. I that, yeah. Fine, you know. I get it. You know, I use. You know what you do? You what? just hand them your damn driver's license, and it's got everything on it. Look it up. Uh, she went through all my drugs. Oh, uh, I guess she got oh, them yeah. from like community Walgreens, and my whole list of them. Of course, half the drugs on there I'm not even taking anymore. They just happen to be on the list, right? And I tell yeah, her, yeah. yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes, no, no. Then yesterday, when I leave, they hand me a list of all my drugs and all the ones that I said no, no, no on are there. I go through them again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll have to go through them again the next time. Yeah, I just I just yeah, print out a list. Out. I keep them on my phone, and then I just print out a list, and I bring it all in, yeah. and I go compare it. <laughs> well, you're, like, oh, no, we don't you, want that. You see, you're well, used, I just printed you, it out for you. You're used to oh, this. We don't want that. You're used to this. I have, in my lifetime, never had an operation. I've never had surgery. You know, the, yeah. the most, well, I did when I was a kid. I had a tonsillectomy. And by the way, they used ether yeah. in those days. And you want to talk about something disgusting. I even remember it to this day. Okay. It, it wasn't like you went out and then you woke up. You went out and then you woke up 
two days later because you were so groggy and you vomited because uh, the smell of the stuff was horrible. Today, it's, it's, it, it, it's pretty good. But, I mean, it, so far as actually a, a, an operation, this is the closest I've come to it. And this, these aren't even really, these, these are considered surgery. What I had the other day was considered surgery, but yeah. it's not surgery. You know, it's not. He cut into you. No, he didn't cut into me. He punctured. Well, he had to replace the gold in there, right? He had to put the gold in there. He had to put the gold in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like the treasure of Sierra Madre. Uh, You know, Uh, look what we just found in Bennett's prostate: gold. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) gold. You know. I could be an ad for Lucky Charms or something, you know. They're magically delicious. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a 49er. But it, it, uh, I hate it propofol. Burned a lot all the way to my shoulder. Yes, yeah, says Forbin Colossus. Yeah. Uh, and next time, what you do, Forbin, next time they use it, tell them to put in the numbing agent first, you know. But it, it's going to hurt a little. Oh, really? I mean, my hand felt like it was like I wanted to chop it off. It was hurting so much. That, that's the worst pain I've had in any of this, you know. So I'm, I'm going to ask him next time if there's anything he can do about it to prevent it from hurting that much because it was not good. Thank you, Foreman. Yeah. I, I, I thought maybe I was the only one. Last, Ray Bernardi says, because he can't, don't, wasn't calling in, <laughs> last hospital I was at, uh, Made me fire a two pounder before I could leave. <laughs> you, oh my God. you know what it is? And this is the other thing that's so demeaning about it. I say to the nurse, I make pee pee. <laughs> you know, come on. You know, I went doo doo. I mean, come on. You know, it's ridiculous. This they is- did the same thing to me, you know, and I don't pee on stage, and they're standing outside the door. Did you pee yet? Did you pee yet? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> piss on stage. I'm sorry. No, but it's also, also, uh, also, as I talked there. about, they give me this thing with a handle on it and a big hole in it for my penis, uh, <laughs> and 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 I have to say I almost didn't fit, but I don't want to brag, and uh, uh, you know, and I'm standing there with this thing, and I'm. Uh, she's saying, "Are you going to go?" And I said, "Would you close the curtain, please?" I'm sorry. I, I, I need. When I go to the bathroom, I have to tell you this, folks. And this is TMI, I'm sure, for most of you. Uh, uh, the too much information is I have to go into the stall to pee. That's what I do. Too. So I'm not going to be standing the next some next to some guy in a urinal. I need my okay? Is, am I head. wrong? You know, is I, that, do too. Right. I, I don't like so, standing so up. So now, now you've got the curtain open and you want me to pee in this bucket? Come on. You know. like a sad I'm going to give you a hand. So he had to close that, and then Marjorie's going from the other side. Did you go yet? Did you go yet? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Don't ask me or I won't be able to go. Did you go yet? And then finally I had a good stream going, and I look at it. Oh, that was good. And it didn't even get up to the hundred spot. On oh thing. shit! You gotta fill that fucking thing. Fi- no, finally, say something that goes. Just jump. throw it. It is as fi- much as I can do. Finally, it. she just said to me. The woman said to me, "It's it's okay. You know, you pee. You, you, we just wanted to make sure you could pee. You know, oh, but I'm still peeing blood. Ah. You know, not yeah. not a lot, but you know, uh-huh. it's it's there. Oh yeah." And that between that and the and the biopsy and all of that, I've got as I say, my prostate looks like a pin cushion. Yeah, you know, I mean, come on, how much how much more damage do you want to do to my prostate? I know that after the radiation, I'll be lucky if I even get an erection. But come on, you know, it really, it's taking a licking right now, Alex. Oh yeah, I feel like they're beating up on my prostate. You know, it's like how much and, can and I what did it ever do except get a little cancer? You know, Aww. it's amazing. It's amazing. So anyway, uh, Phil's not here tonight, and uh, that means that we can say anything about Trump we want to, uh, without recourse of having him suddenly explode. Um, and his perfect briefing. Hmm. That's what he said about his, his thing today. He had the most perfect <laughs> briefing today. <laughs> You do the hands. Perfect briefing. Hands. Everything. everything is the most perfect fucking everything. What was the, the what, 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 what briefing was that? The one that he gave to to the Congress about you know what happened. 
Yeah, the, the one Congress. That, uh, Pompeo gave it. Finally, yeah, yeah. after a week. It was a perfect one, the, briefing. Yeah, it's the one that he told everybody about what happened and, and why it happened. It the was one the most Mike perfect Lee, one like, ever. The one that everybody Mike told Lee, him that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. This guy is out of his head. It, 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 it's it's crazy. It's nuts. It's really nuts. Uh, the emperor and, and, has no clothes. And what was the, what was the word he mis completely mispronounced the other day? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 looks like me. What? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> do you remember? Do you know what I'm talking about, he Scott? Said I said he sounds like me. Yeah, there were about three or four words he screwed up. He said, he yeah, said it was like he was swallowing shade. his dentures. What did what what did you say, Scott? Accomplishment shades. <laughs> Accomplishment yeah, yeah, shades. Yeah, one of them. Accomplishment shades. Oh, well, what that? is that exactly? What word is that supposed to be? He oh, yeah, so you know something? I know this guy doesn't drink, but he should. He, yeah. he, he then have he an excuse for this. Tolerated. This is the most. Yeah, yeah. This is the most <laughs> no, inebriated. Yeah, yeah. This is the no, most the inebriated um, <laughs> a non-drinker I've ever seen have in ever, my have life. Have you ever seen Jimmy Kimmel do the drunk t Donald Trump? We, oh, we, and, wait a minute. we used we used to do that now. with uh, who do we do that? We did that with Bush years yeah, ago with um, yeah. uh, 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 Albert came up with it. You just slow down anybody, but what you yeah. do is you don't change the pitch. Yeah, you slow them down, but then you raise the pitch so it's their yeah. normal pitch, and they sound like they're drunk. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, Trump Trump had a tweet today that they were making fun of too. Yeah. In that he asked, he says, "Well, look at look at how look at your four oh nine k and see how well it's doing." Yeah, four oh nine k. Yeah, it's four oh one. What does it say here? Ray Renati <laughs> says I had I had the most perfect ejaculation at lunchtime. <laughs> oh my God. Talk about me Why giving that with too much information. <laughs> Was ask me if it was a two pounder. Was it a two pounder? <laughs> two ouncer. He said today. Yeah. <laughs> wow, uh, you know. But anyway, it, it, you know, I just think we're 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 in a lot of trouble with this guy. It's just gotten to the point where uh, it's just sheer insanity. And uh, every time I hear about it or watch it, it just it just grieves me greatly. And as I say, I know you're going to church and praying for him, but while you're there, pray for us too. You know, uh, we're 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 being led by an absolute colossal moron uh, and and a psycho. I mean, he's he's not well. Mm -hmm. This guy is. Um, but hey, America, you voted for him. I mean, what you vote for? Yeah, you, you know. I didn't vote for him. Well, you didn't vote for him, and I didn't vote for him, and three million more people didn't vote for him than voted for the other person, but that didn't seem to work. That's why we have to double our efforts this time. And I don't yeah. care who the Rep Democratic candidate is, uh, vote this guy out. That's all there is to it. I mean, Bloomberg. It, it, oh, I'll God. even vote for Bloomberg over Trump. You know something though, if I I will, you know why I won't vote for Bloomberg? I don't want to vote for anybody who isn't exactly running. You know? I mean, he's yeah. not doing much running, is he? He's he just is pounding of, us with commercials he, out he, here, he, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and by the way, I'm not voting for uh, Bernie either, and I'll tell you the reason why. I I get a uh, a phone call uh, one of these Oh, oh, no, it isn't a phone call. I get a text trying to get uh, money out of me for mm -hmm. Bernie. I'm getting, I'm now getting uh, the, the equivalent of uh, robocalls as robo-texts from Bernie wow. wanting money. Fuck you, Bernie. I'm not giving you money. You know, don't try to get money out of me that way. Okay. Anyway, hey, there's the, uh, there's the ever-loving theme song that we play every now and then on this here program. Uh, and uh, we uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Been a small crowd, but a vibrant one, and one that's uh, apparently the audience wanted to listen to because we had a lot of people uh, listening to us. Yeah. Yeah. They probably, want, you, they probably just you. wanted to watch it to see if I was dead yet. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let you know when I am, okay? And I'll, I'll do f at least 30 minutes on it. 
Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Charlie. Thank you, Scott. Always a pleasure. Thank you, uh, Tony, and thank you, Kevin, and also thank you, Tom, thanks to Tom Yamaguchi, who had to leave us early because he was having a bad signal. Uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm through for tonight. Hey, everybody, uh, why don't you give a big wave goodbye so that they can all see you go away. Bye-bye. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. As we know it, there'll be another one convening in just a few moments uh, as Jack Bishop hosts the, uh, hosts the uh, 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 intersection. Okay. Uh, gee, I didn't did I have myself on. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the intersection, and he'll be next. In the meantime, as always, I'm Alex Bennett reminding you that we'll be here tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.